Hello and welcome to the first in the series of tutorials for creating noise contours with iNoise modeling software. This video will go through the user interface and will show you how to get started. First things first, open existing project folder and we're going to create a new project at this little tab here down the bottom. Okay, so we're going to add a new folder name here and this is going to be tutorial, oh, tutorials, tutorials and uh, the project description here I'm just going to put online tutorials good you'll, you'll, you'll find this new window it has three parts the first one is areas and we're just going to click new area here and this is you know for different parts of the scheme you might have you're then going to put version one of the area if you could update this in the future you have a second version then you have the new model screen this here is for telling what calculation method you would like and what version of the model you're iterating now we're just going to click on the uh, this version and open it and you'll have this screen here which is the uh, the main window where you'll you'll find everything we have the groups menu where you can select groups for items you've got the time of day the period you want to find here it's selected LDN then we have the different area sources the different point sources receivers uh, you've got buildings you've got ground regions foliage heights uh, the next thing to look out for is the selection menu over here and this gives you all the information of the item you have selected for example we'll get this receiver and we'll add it this is effectively a microphone position maybe you're on site of a sound level meter and you're wanting to calibrate so you can add your height and your coordinates here we're going to put one and a half meters we're going to take off the incident noise level for facades because we're just in free field and we call this res rec1 uh, monitoring position one for example uh, if we give that a click we will see down the side here that you uh, has all the information you have so you can select different heights for different uh, if you're on a facade and maybe you want different floors uh, we're just going to point source so here source one and maybe this could be like a water pump or something similar so you've got your coordinates again and you've got height above terrain which i'm going to set to one then we've got uh, your directivity and your sound power levels and the, uh, the hours it works in a day um so for example you could have if it's just running during the daytime hours you can you can select that there and it'll take it into account uh, and the sound power levels, we do have uh, some presets here that are from the uh, British Standard uh, 5228, I believe, at the top of my head. And we're going to put that in for the water pump. And you can see down here, these are all of the, uh, the values that have been input. There's no directivity, so that's a uh, spherical point source at the moment. And then you can see the sound power levels per octave band there. So we get the display settings down the right hand side, and uh, you can turn things on and off as you uh, as you like here, and effectively uh, make things easier to look at while showing results. As you can see, you turn the receiver off, on again, and you can. This is very useful for when you're you're trying to do printouts and. Uh, you maybe just don't want some things that are clogging up the view um, so yeah we we'll delete these now uh, we're going to go to see how you would import terrain data or file data so you've got shape files map info text files CAD files geo files etc CAD files are quite commonly used here's the window for that we'll go into this in a future video um, a lot of terrain data is sometimes used in shape files and that window is here it's a bit simpler um, another good feature that I quite like is the uh, geo reference images where you can grab an image from Google Earth and it's already geo reference for you so long as you have the right coordinate system as I've already done here 
Um, you just got to make sure that it's right for your country wherever you are. Now you're going to want Google Earth installed for this and if you click on the start button you'll see it opens Google Earth for you. And for this video I'm just going to, oh where shall I look, I'm going to put in, oh, how about the, the Prism Acoustics office. So let's have a look, it might actually be better searching. Cornwall Row, Cornwall Building, there we are, and here we are. So, I'm just going to take the name off there, yeah, that looks good, we'll, uh, I think we'll grab that and put it into iNoise. Click grab button, and you'll get the window pop up, do you agree? Yes, and we'll save that up here. Probably best to save it in the job folder, but uh, I've rushed through this one, so I'm just going to save it here. Uh, yeah, well, we'll just we'll save it here. Tutorial one and close. We'll open up iNoise again. You're going to have to go into View and Background Maps. Under Background Maps, you're going to go Add File, and this would be easier if it was in the folder, but find the file, open. When you close the window, it should all be geo-referenced, which means that the real dimensions are there, so the real distances are already set to this image, which is pretty cool. Right, that'll do for this week. And we'll see you again soon.